morning from my side. Uh, my name is Borja Stukowski, and it's a pleasure to present to you the preliminary work that we are working on MISP with respect to disability and user experience. This is joint work with my supervisor, Gabriele Lenzini, and we are from the Center for Security Reliability Trust at the University of Luxembourg. So just to give you a brief outline, I'm going to introduce a bit the motivation about this project, the methodology and preliminary results that we have, and what are the next steps that we do in this direction. So I guess I do not need to explain much to this community how MISP works, what type of use it has, or how the information is shared or could be shared among the instances and communities. But it is important to know that there are different types of users that come from different types of organizations and they have different purposes for which they use uh, the MISP platform. So we're dealing with a very technically advanced information sharing platform here. And as I said, it has a diverse set of um, stakeholders that are involved in this platform. They all have distinctive needs and objectives. And probably some of you have experienced, but as communicated by MISP, often there are sharing difficulties. So basically that are not so much on the technical level, but on the social level in terms of certain restrictions, why people share information or do not share information. How do they consume the information? Do they trust the information or not? So there are a lot of um, issues that hover, let's say, the technical layers of, of this platform. And as research suggests as well, the importance of user experience and usability is, let's say, uh, these aspects are paramount for the successful operation of an information sharing platform and the amount of information that is consumed and contributed uh, towards it. So we set out to investigate basically how do MISP users evaluate the usability and user experience aspects of the platform and more specifically, how do they perceive both the pragmatic and hedonic qualities of the system? And I will explain a bit more in detail now. So we set out uh, to investigate this as a first step via a quantitative method called the user experience questionnaire, which is uh, basically a combination of six scales with 26 items that asks people to rate specific aspects from two imposing views, such as, for example, do you find the system annoying or enjoyable? So they have to pick a value between these two values. So there are 26 questions of this form that try to answer um, or get some information about the attractiveness, perspicuity, or basically how difficult it is to learn uh, the platform or the system, the product, how it is efficient, uh, what is the dependability, the stimulation, and novelty uh, of this platform. So just to give you an interdependence of these um, scales, basically the attractiveness is a pure valence dimension, whereas the efficiency, dependability, and perspicuity are more in the goal-directed uh, um, uh, aspects of the platform or the pragmatic qualities. And then on the hedonic side, we have the stimulation and novelty, basically. How do people find these aspects as well, which usually in the past have not been uh, considered via usability studies. So the second part was um, to investigate a bit more uh, who are the users that uh, use this platform. So basically their demographics, their background, profile, education, etc. And some of the questions were what is the company that you come from? How long have you been using MISP, uh, etc.? And the last part is one more quantitative scale, which is called the system usability scale. And I presume maybe some of you might have come across it because it is a more known or standardized scale that has existed for more years than the UEQ. However, with any, like with all of the other scales, there are certain limitations or things that we need to take into account when deploying them. And in specifically in the SUS, it does not look into any of the user experience or the hedonic aspects. So this is, for example, what it, uh, what questions from the SUS look like. So at the training session that was carried out in March earlier this year, uh, we had discussed with the team of Circle to, to try to get the preliminary feedback from the participants of this um, training session on a voluntary basis uh, to tell us how do they perceive the, the MISP platform, etc. So there were 50 people that were at the training session. Um, 25 responded, 25 did not respond to the questionnaire. Of those 25, 24 were male, one was a female. Um, 
they had 20 had a technical or engineering background, five were non-technical. In terms of education, uh, 19 or more than 75%, if I'm not mistaken, uh, had a, um, a bachelor's degree or, or higher. Um, when it comes to the age span, uh, we can see that the largest group of people were in the range of uh, 26 to, to 35, so relatively a young um age group. And when, when it comes to the prior experience with MISP, uh, the majority of them had used the system for less than six months, out of which from one to six months was the largest group, were basically eight people. Um, when we asked them how often they use MISP, um, the people that attended this training session said that uh, most of them said that it is between uh, once and three times per week. So only a small number used it on a daily basis and the next smaller group, 17, was even less uh, than one week. Uh, when it comes to the industry sector, uh, the participants came from these, let's say, uh, industries. The largest was banking. I don't know if it has to do with the fact that we did the training here in Luxembourg, but that was the case in this uh, training session. And when it comes to user profiles, now this was interesting because uh, before the survey we thought that people have a clear, let's say, role, but many of them actually see themselves as software analysts in addition to another role. So this is how each of the people have, uh, basically how many have indicated they an um, see themselves as software analysts in addition to maybe some, uh, some of the other uh, roles. So... It is interesting to see that there are certain users that use the platform for multiple purposes, actually. Okay, so just to summarize, so 48% were in this pain from 26 to 35. The majority anal uh, identified themselves as security analysts. Uh, they came from banking, the majority of them. And while it was the first training session for all of them, over 50% of them had used the training materials or the virtual uh, machine before coming to the training session, which is one of the, let's say, materials that uh, cert, uh, Circle uh, provides. Okay, so these are the results of the questionnaires, and I presume this might not necessarily mean much, so I will try to explain it within a larger context. So we'll start with the user, user experience questionnaire. And basically, if we look at, uh, if we compare those means against benchmark values, we can see that the um, MISP platform is positively evaluated on all aspects except for perspicuity. Basically, those users found it quite complex and difficult to use the platform. All, on all the others, it is very good, um, and especially on the hedonic side, which is actually excellent or above average. So these benchmark values um, are obtained from a data set uh, that has been uh, carried out or that compromise, uh, comprises 401 studies with 18, more than 18,000 people. So basically the average estimates of different types of platforms using this uh, scale give us certain benchmark values against which we can compare other systems. And of course we need to take this with a bit of a uh, consideration, but I will come to the, let's see, the limitations uh, in a minute. So when it comes to the hedonic aspects, um, so basically how people find the platform in terms of novelty, motivation, etc. It is above average. It is in the best 10 res 10 percent best results. When it comes to how easy it is to learn the system, that is, let's say, the aspect that MISP is worst on, 25%. And when it comes to the SUS, so basically the third uh, the second scale that I uh, showed you before, the average score is 64.5. Again, this is a benchmark value that has been obtained via analyzing a, lar a large number of uh, different products, uh, etc., where 68 is considered to be the average value. So basically 64.5 is considered to be uh, below average, which again Again, probably might be due to the fact of the uh, difficulty to, to learn the platform, etc. So what we need to mention here is that these findings are based on a very small sample, so basically based on 25 responses. So we cannot really conclude anything strongly. However, it can give us an early indication or direction in which we can try to explore further. And that is definitely what we would like to do. So 
using mixed methods, and here I again mentioned these quantitative surveys such as the EUQ, but also using interviews and other methods, we would like to understand better what are the biggest usability user experience issues. Because of course, these uh, surveys can only point us to a direction, but it does not, they do not really explain why people answer these questions like that or why do they find the platform difficult to learn, etc. So we would like to complement uh, within the next period, quantitative methods uh, using some interviews. So I'll be here throughout the day. Uh, if any of you have any feedback or comments, I would be more than happy to hear them. But of course, it is on a voluntary basis, so you're more than welcome to also provide maybe some other feedback via other ways uh, through the GIP, uh, etc. So just to mention as a, as a final step, I invite you all to take part in the user experience survey, which we have uh, ported into an online form. Uh, and this will be basically provided, I think, also with the latest training materials uh, and the link will be provided from, from the Circle uh, website. But from my side, that is all for now and uh, I thank you for the attention. And if you have any questions, feel free to let me know, either in person or during this podium now. Thank you. Yes. Uh, so in relation to the survey, how long do you plan to keep it open and, and wait until you get enough results just to have a rough idea? So I think we will perform analysis on a continuous basis, but I would say we would have it at least for six months, but even more. Uh, hopefully it will be something that will continue on and we will get continuous feedback in terms of also to be able to compare how the introduction of new features might impact the overall experience, etc. So it sounds like some stuff you've done here are also like related to the um, threat intel community. So um, maybe it'd be interesting to compare with how it is threat intel wise or maybe other similar software. Have you considered doing that with similar software? Thank you. That's an interesting question. Um, so basically, if we have more data, we will also be able to compare how different people evaluate the platform depending on their background, uh, depending on their background, uh, their role, etc. But as you say, it would also be good to compare different types of products using these methodologies. Now, we would probably need to find a large enough sample that uses both of these systems so that we can compare and see how they evaluate those systems. Or if it's, a, if it's an even bigger sample, then maybe not the same people need to necessarily evaluate both systems. But we need to make uh, sure that the sample of the users that answer these questions is representative so that we do not come to some full conclusions. But I think that's something definitely that could be done. Thanks very much for this. Uh, was your instrument clearly focused on what I'd call the UI of the tool? Because it occurs to me that there may be, particularly in some of the categories of respondent, some conceptual issues like what's a galaxy and that might be a separate set of you know user experience issues than why is this button disappearing at this time kind of thing i just wondered was this both either i wonder if there's a connection between i don't understand what you mean by matrix and i'm not having a good experience with the tool so the questions that are in the scales they're independent from any platform. They can be applied as such across different, so there is no ambiguity when it comes to the specifics of the platform, such as, as you mentioned, specific features, etc. Those are probably things that could be investigated furthermore in an interview, uh, but I would not say that any bias was introduced via the terminology that is used in the platform and what the questions ask, because these are basically... Yeah, uh, applicable throughout without any consideration for the specific features. Okay, thank you.